I am big on encouraging people to budget. Most of the time that's with the budgeting app, which is why I do so many budgeting app reviews. But you know what? Not everyone is into budgeting apps. Some people are into paper, which is why in today's video, we're looking at five of the most highly rated budget planners on Amazon. I've got a mock budget I put into each of these planners. We'll walk through each one cheapest to most expensive, and I'll let you know what features I like, which ones are easiest to use, and which ones are my favorites overall. And if you like any of them, I'll have an affiliate link for each one in the description down below. Let's jump in. Budget Planner 1. I bought this one off of Amazon for $6.28. And here's what it costs as I film this video. It's literally just called Budget Planner. Let's jump in. So on the front, you've got contact information. Second page, we've got financial goals, which is actually really cool. It's a great way of, you know, trying to actually move forward with your financial progress. But we don't just have goals, we have a way to break them down with strategy, actions to take to earn more money, actions that the, you'll take to cut expenses. Next, we've got the full month. Now, the nice thing about this one and the rest of the budget planners is they're not designed for a specific year. So you just fill out the month that way, you got places for notes and whatnot. Next, you've got your monthly plan. So you've got section for goals up here, upcoming purchases, upcoming bills, and then your income and your savings. So we got a breakdown of income. We can have it in different paychecks right here if we want. I also added in YouTube, why not? You know, if that's like a side hustle of yours. In the savings, you can put down different things that you're saving for. So say vacation or your home down payment. We'll come back to this deadline. Next page, we have the actual monthly budget where you write down all of your categories and expenses along with the budgeted amount. And then you'll be writing down the actual amount later on in the month. So I've got some general categories, rent, gas, groceries, phone, whatnot, all the way down, including some loans like car loan, student loan, and giving. You're going to write down your total budgeted here for each expense. And then hopefully that'll actually add up to the total income that you have over here. Next, we've got the expense tracker. This is what you're going to be using throughout the entire month to track each expense that you have. So if you're, you know, you've got your rent, you got your gas, you got your groceries, you can put those in those specific categories along with the amounts. And then at the end of the month, you're gonna actually total up the amount in each of those categories. So anything that fits under transportation, you're gonna add up all your gas transactions and you're gonna put it in here under actual. After you've done that with all of your expenses to see what you actually spent in each category, then you just have to find out what the difference is between your budgeted and your actual. So in this example, I just put down that we spent $50 less in gas. We spent $50 extra in groceries. We actually spent $50 less in entertainment, which leaves us with a $50 surplus. Well, guess what? Now you get to choose where you're gonna put that $50 surplus, which is why I have debt here with $50. So on this example, I basically put that $50 surplus into like a fund for paying off debt. You got a bunch of sections for expense tracking, which is nice. And then here at the end of the month, then we've got a monthly budget review where you can reflect on the prior month, see what you had the most trouble with, what you can improve on, and what goals you might have for the coming month to kind of improve on the things that you learned from this month. And then it's got a section for ideas and notes. You're gonna have 12 of these throughout the entire year, obviously one for each month. Then after the last month, we've got this section for our savings tracker. So I put in a vacation. We got the amount that we need, which is $1,200, and we want it by one year from now. Then you got 12 lines here. Each line is for one month. You can put in the date, the amount that you're depositing into that fund, and the total that you've saved so far. So then if we go back to our monthly budget, you can always add in like an expense of vacation savings. And then that's where that goes right here. You got eight different sections for savings trackers right here, which is really nice because like my wife and I have way more than eight savings funds for various things. So um, it gives you a good number of options for saving throughout the year. On the next page, we've got the debt tracker where you can write down the different debts that you have. So in this example, we've got student loans and a car loan, $50,000 and $35,000, along with what I looked up on Google was the average payment for student loans is $500. Average payment for a new car loan, $700, crazy. Then you can put the date that you made that payment, the amount that you paid, and the balance after you made that payment. Same with car loan down here. Honestly, you can put in each individual credit card if you have a bunch of credit cards that you're trying to pay off. 
and you've got eight sections for debt tracking right here. Next, you've got the holiday budget, which is good for savings for, you know, Christmas or just this season that we're coming up to, you know? So maybe you put in pumpkin spice latte for a hundred dollar budget. It's just an example. You can also write in here like gifts for let's say a hundred dollars. But then you got a section down here maybe you're trying to give me a gift of chocolate milk and you're budgeting a hundred dollars well that's where that gift budget of a hundred dollars is going it's a lot of chocolate milk personally the way that i would use this holiday section is by creating a savings fund here for holiday you put in the amount that you're trying to save by say christmas and with the due date and then you can take that amount let's say you've saved twelve hundred dollars you take that amount and you budget that out for your holiday budget, the full $1,200. Then you've got a section for holiday spending, it can be anything from groceries to travel or whatever. Next, we've got regular bill tracker, which is nice for just tracking the different bills that you have throughout the year. This is especially nice because then you can look back and see how bills change throughout the year. So obviously like electric, gas, uh, like propane or whatever, that's gonna change throughout the year and then when you go into the following year, then you can go back to this and and budget it out based on how much you paid in the prior year. Last but not least, we've got a summary of the year. So you can put down the different monthly expense categories that you have and track it across all 12 months. It really is just supposed to give you kind of a snapshot of the entire year. Then you can look back, decide what are some things that we can improve on. And you've got some stickers right here to help you make budgeting more fun. Overall, a great planner, very simple. Let's move on to the next one. Next, we've got another one that's simply called Budget Planner. A little more aesthetic though. Got this one off of Amazon for $9.99 and this is the price as of the filming of this video. All right, similar to the last one, on this first page, we've got financial goals and then different strategy for accomplishing those goals. So ways to earn more money, ways to cut expenses. Next, we've got a bill tracker. You can put the months across the top here. You can put the bills down here. Uh, the amount and then the due date I screwed up the first two but here in March you got the due date and the date paid honestly I wish that there were more than six sections for bills six bills to track is not that much next we've got a savings tracker unlike the last budget planner the savings tracker and the debt tracker are actually at the front of the book which I like a lot here I just threw in savings for a vacation you got 12 lines to record deposits into those savings funds plus you've got four different savings goals that you can plan for right here next is the debt tracker similarly you can put in different debts here car loan student loan credit cards something like that I've got the car loan here here for our mock budget. You actually have eight sections for the debt tracker here. Then we move on into the individual month. For our mock budget, I've thrown in October 2023. We got our different salaries plus a little extra income. Total is $4,020. With this, you can actually throw in the savings here for the monthly budget, which I like a lot. So for vacation, we're putting in $100 for our savings. Then it's gonna have your total monthly income minus your savings is the amount that you can budget for the rest of your expenses. Now, what I really like about this planner over the last planner is it already has some categories filled in for you, which is nice because then you don't have to write it in every month. So I threw my mock budget numbers into this. Next, you're gonna have your daily expenses where you can put in all of your expenses for Kroger, Speedway, rent, whatever. Then you're gonna be able to take at the end of the month, each category, add up the amounts in each category and put that into the actual expense item for each category. So again, if you spend only $150 of your $200 budgeted for fuel, then you've got a $50 surplus. Similar with groceries, if you go over, then you might have to go into the whole $50. Well, then you've got your total actual expenses, you've got your, your difference, and hopefully those are identical, leaving a difference of zero or leaving a surplus. You got a lot of places for daily expenses, which is really nice. Then here at the end of the month, you've got a place for a month in the in review. In the last budget planner, they didn't have a section for putting in any numbers. I like that you can put in some numbers here to actually give like a snapshot of how the month actually went. And then you still have places to put in like, you know, did you meet your budget? Things that you can improve biggest wins, which is big because you need to be able to celebrate actually accomplishing things within your budget. You go into the next month, you got 12 months of these. We'll go to the end of the 
budget planner and we have a section for Christmas budgeting. Again, really nice for planning. The way that I would use this again is by creating a savings fund at the beginning of the budget planner for Christmas specifically. Then if you have a thousand dollars saved for Christmas, then you can budget out that thousand dollars here at the back in the Christmas budgeting section. You got gifts, wrapping paper, Christmas ham, whatever. And then you can write out your different Christmas gifts that you're purchasing people based on that $400 budget. You got Christmas budgeting, Christmas gifts, and then you have more gifts and Christmas spending. So anything extra, you know, if you're going out to the store to buy some wrapping paper or whatever. Then here at the end, we've got the year end budget summary. Again, just a nice way to kind of give a snapshot of how the year actually went. And ideally you're gonna use this to help you determine how you're gonna budget in the coming year, what things you need to change, whatever. And we can't leave out that this also comes with stickers. Great for helping you uh, make budgeting fun. This is also nice because you can put in these tabs for the different months making it a lot easier to access what month that you're on currently. Great budget planner, it's only 10 bucks. Let's move on to the next one. Next, we've got this budget planner. Not my first choice in color, but it is what it is. This one I got on Amazon for $11.66, and this is the cost as I film. Again, we've got financial goals at the beginning. We've got ways to earn more money, ways to cut expenses. Clearly, a lot of these budget planners take ideas from other budget planners. Again, we've got savings trackers and debt trackers at the beginning of the book, which I like a lot because it's good to keep both of those things at the front of your mind. If it's at the back of the book, then you're probably not gonna see it quite as frequently. So this is nice. I've got vacation written in here. I've got Christmas written in here. You got eight savings funds right here that you can track. And then we got the debt tracker. I put in car loan and student loan for our mock budget. And you've got eight debt trackers right here, which is nice because if you've got a number of credit cards that you're trying to pay off and you can put each credit card in individually. And then we get into the first month. So we, we can put in our monthly income, different salaries, extra income, total income and the amount that we've got in our savings. I think this calendar right here is just for general notes. If you see a bill coming up or whatever, then you can write that down. And then so far of the budgeting planners that we've looked at, this is easily my favorite monthly budget because it's got way more categories already written in. I mean, a lot of these categories are very general and ones that a lot of people are gonna use. So it's nice because then I don't have to write a lot. This much easier. I write in the amount that I budget along with subtotals in each category and then that gives us the total budgeted. Hopefully that's going to equal the amount that you have in your total income. One mistake that I made is that I'm actually gonna have to lower this by $100 because we put $100 into savings. So we're gonna change our entertainment down to 100 and that puts us at 3920 which is our 3920 plus our 100 equals our total income. Then we're gonna go on to our daily expenses. Again, this is where you put in all of your expenses along with the categories. At the end of the month, you add up those categories, you put them into the individual categories in terms of the actual spending that you had, and then you can look at the total actual spending and see what the difference is. Lots of places for daily expenses, lots of places. At the end of the month, you got a place for a monthly budget review. Again, this one, similar to the last one, has a place for putting in kind of a snapshot of the numbers from the month, along with ways that you can improve, big wins, goals for the next month, and notes here on the right side. Okay, one thing I like about this budget planner a lot is that each month is a different color. So this first month, we've got kind of a bluish color, Next month, we've got a purple color. This just makes it a little bit easier for going through the year and opening up to the right month. It's nice. After the 12th month, we actually have a section for the Christmas budgeting. If we're saving for Christmas, then we can take that amount that is in our Christmas savings fund, put it here for our Christmas budget, and budget out that full amount for gifts, wrapping paper, de decorations, groceries, whatever. Then you can break up your gifts into Christmas gifts, you can break it up into Christmas spending. Then we have the summary of the year. Again, give you a snapshot of the entire year. Hopefully you can take things that you learned from this year and improve for next year. Here at the back, we actually do get an instruction sheet, which is nice, but no stickers. Again, great budgeting planner. Let's move on to the next one. I got this one for $14.99 on Amazon, and here's the price as of filming. First, we got these stickers here. These are tabs for each month. Really nice for quickly accessing the month that you're in. First thing that I noticed, this is the fourth budget planner and the first one that doesn't have 
any sort of like place to write down financial goals or like strategies for accomplishing those goals. Very interesting. Okay, so here on the first page, you've got an annual budget, which honestly, I'm having a little bit of a hard time understanding exactly how you'd be using this. Cause like, it's pretty much just all what you're expecting throughout the year. You've got your expected income, you've got your expected expenses within different categories. I mean, I guess you can put in like electricity, the amount that you're expecting that you're gonna be spending throughout the whole year for electricity, like any other categories that you might have, and, and then add up the balances at the bottom. But that doesn't really like, that's not gonna help me personally have an expected annual budget when things can change from month to month very quickly. I don't personally see this being super helpful. Next, we've got the bill tracker, which should be nice, but it's kind of hard to follow exactly what you're supposed to do with it. You've got category and due date right here. I wrote rent and first, like the first of the month. And then you've got the month here, so I wrote October, but then like, are you supposed to write your next bill here? And then do you, you only have one section to put in how much it costs. I don't know. Ultimately, I think it would make more sense to use it something kind of like this because you can write down electric and gas and then just draw a line down the center with the amount that you have for each of those items. But I mean, it's definitely not the clearest, nor is it the best budget tracker that I've seen in any of these budget planners so far. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this. On the next page, we've got a jar where you can put like uh, your main saving goal and see it kind of fill up throughout the year, which is kind of cool. Right here, we've got a savings tracker where you can put different savings funds that you have. I've got vacation in here with the amount that you deposit per month. There's only four savings trackers, which is a bummer because it's like, I use way more than four. Next, you've got debt trackers. You got eight of these total. The nice thing is this one actually has interest rate included in there, which I haven't seen in any of the other budget planners. Then depending on what debt payoff method that you're using, you can kind of use that as a guide for which debt you're gonna be putting any extra income towards. Again, 12 lines, one line per month to show what your payment was that month along with the ending balance after that month. Next, we turn the page and we see our monthly budget. Now, this is the first I've seen something like this, but it's got a folder here on the left side for receipts and bills. I'm not a big fan of holding on to paper receipts, but if you're into that kind of thing, then maybe that makes it a lot easier to catch up on transactions later on in the month if you don't do it like right after you make a transaction. On the right side, we've got the monthly budget. I'm really not a fan of having to write in every single category that I have. So that's a ding in my opinion. But similar to other ones, you've got the budgeted column, you've got the actual column. Here we've got a calendar on the left side. I think this is way more useful for tracking bills than the actual bill tracker. You got your income tracker up here, show exactly what your total income is. Lots of sections for day-to-day -day spending, transactions, and then you've got your monthly budget at the end of the month. All right, you got 12 of those months, of course. Then when you get to the end of the very last month, there's actually nothing for like Christmas spending. Maybe it's not a big deal to you, but it's nice to have a section for one of the biggest expenses that you're gonna have during the year. Instead, we only have the summary of the year, which is nice for a snapshot, but this is the first time that I've seen a section for writing down account information kind of nice for tracking your finances too. Ultimately, I think that this is a very good looking budget planner, but it's less practical than the other, other budget planners so far. Personal opinion. Last budget planner, this is called the Clever Fox Budget Book. It costs $19.99 on Amazon, and this is the cost as of filming. First thing that hits me about this book is it's got a nice exterior. It's soft and kind of rubbery. It also has a place to put a pen on the right side. First, we've got financial goals, like we've seen in a lot of the other ones. We got a mind map on the right side, which I don't know what that is, but it'd be nice to have a map of my mind. And then we've got strategy, and tactics for ways to earn money, more money, ways to cut expenses, skills that you'd like to learn in order to accomplish your financial goals. And then I've never seen this before, important dates. This is kind of nice because if you've got expenses coming up during certain parts of the month that you wanna be prepared for, then maybe you can write them down. One of the things for me is like in August, around my birthday, I need to be able to pay for my vehicle registration. So that's kind of a nice section. Next, we've got the start of the monthly budget. We've got this month's goals, checklist for anything that you want, and then your month's income and savings. And then you've got a calendar under here, which I would personally use for like tracking bills. On the right side, we've got the monthly budget, 
I love that they already have all these categories already filled in. Makes it much easier so that I don't have to go write down mortgage slash rent or insurance or whatever. Less writing is good for me. They've got budgeted and they've got actual, which we've seen in all the other budget planners. Total budgeted, total actual, and the difference. Then in the next section, we've got the expense tracker, which is where you put all your transactions. Many sections for expense tracking. And then you've got your monthly budget review at the end. Now, something that we've seen in other budget planners is a place to put some numbers from that month. But I really like this spending analysis because you can put in the amount and the percentage that you spent on different categories. And then you can fill in this pie graph so that you can actually see how much you spent on housing or food or healthcare, or whatever. It's nice visual representation. Again, some questions about reflection for the month and ways that you can improve for the following month. After those 12 sections for monthly budgeting, we come to the savings tracker. Side note, this one actually comes with three multicolored ribbons, which makes it easy for just flipping to the section of the budget book that you wanna look at. Again, we can use the savings tracker for different things that we're saving for, vacation, Christmas. We got eight sections for savings. We got eight sections for debt. We've got student debt and car debt in here, but we can also put in different credit cards that we're trying to pay off. Oh shoot, we actually have 12 sections for debt tracking. That's nice. Then just like other budget planners, we've got a place for holiday spending and budget right here. And then we have a bill tracker, which I think this one's much better than the one in our last budget planner that we looked at. You just put your bills down here. You got your month right here. You can put in the total. Lastly, we've got the summary of the year along with your monthly expenses summary. Then we actually have a check register. First time that we've seen this in one of the budget planners, but nice, especially if you're writing a lot of checks. And the very last section of this, you've got account information, which again is nice for tracking your different finances, kind of makes it easy to log in. Here at the back, we've got some instructions for how to use the budget planner along with stickers. Also, this budget planner comes with a 60 day money back guarantee, so no risk. Okay, we got a great set of planners here. This is how I rank them. Ultimately, this one looks beautiful, but I think it's my least favorite. It's the most confusing to use. It doesn't have a place for budgeting your Christmas and you have to write in every budget expense. Number four is this one. This has some great features in it. It's got a place for Christmas budgeting, but you have to write in every expense, but it's really not a difficult planner to use. Next, we got this one. Aesthetically, it looks really great. It's got the Christmas budgeting in there. It also has some of the expenses already filled in for different expense categories. Overall, very easy to use and reasonably priced. This one gets my second place spot. It's nothing special to look at. Doesn't come with stickers or anything, but it's got categories already filled in. It's got your expense tracking. It's got your Christmas expense tracking. It's really a very practical budget planner and pretty reasonably priced. I do like the Clever Fox budget planner quite a bit. It looks really nice. It feels really nice. The quality is, is definitely Definitely there. And it's got the most features out of any of the budget planners that we looked at. Only downside is it's the most expensive one, but maybe it's worth it to you. Okay, if you actually made it to the end of this, I have no use for the for these budget planners anymore. I only wrote a few things in each one. If you liked any of these, I would be happy to send one of these to you if you pay shipping. First come, first serve, obviously. Just message me on Instagram and I can get your information from there. We're always covering new budgeting apps and whatnot, so if you want to check out the best budgeting apps, in my opinion, then you can watch this video next. Otherwise, watch this video next and subscribe here if you want to see more budgeting techniques, budget app reviews, and cashback debit card reviews.